In this video, we'll be seeing how to implement Google Sign-In on Android. What we're seeing right now is the end result of what we're going to do in this video. When we click on the Login Google button, you can see that the option to choose the mail account. We can select the mail from here, and you can see the sign-up is successful, and you can see a toast message with the mail of the user. And second activity showing up, so that's what we are going to do in this video. Okay, now let's just go ahead and implement it. In the description of this video, there is a documentation link. To follow this video, please open the link. We'll be following the documentation. Click on Get Started. And here we can see the steps. So you can see that we have to open the API console. So click on it and you'll get the API console screen. Here we need to create a new project. We can give a name for the project. You should browse your organization. For this example, I will not use it, just click Create. OK, we can see the project is getting created here. We have to make sure that we are on the correct project. Then next, we have to go to the API and Services section. Click on this and click on Auth Consent screen. Here we can select External and click on Create. In this part, we have to fill the application details. So let's give the name of the application and a support email. Also upload the logo. I have entered the name of the application. Given the support email and also uploaded the logo, I have added the link to the home page. Links to privacy policy and the terms. If you don't have those links, for a test purposes you may skip it for now, but you will need it later so you need to create one. You need a domain and simply host it. I just give my domain here. And then we can give the developer contact information. After filling these details, we can click on save and continue. Let's wait for it to complete. On this screen we just scroll down. And simply click on save and continue. We don't have to add test users yet. So click on save and continue. On this summary screen, you can simply click on go back to dashboard. OK, so now our app is ready. Now let's go back to the documentation. We have finished with the first and second stage. Now we are in the third stage. We can see that we have to add this HA1 signature. We can just click this. Or go back to Google Cloud, select Credentialist. Make sure that you are in the right project. Click this Create Credentials and click the second option that is Auth Client ID. And here we have to choose the platform that is Android. You can give a name here, but let's use the default value. The package name. We have to obtain it from our Android application, so we need to open the Android Studio. This is the application that we made in the previous video. The link is in the description of this video. Go to main activity Java file and then just copy this for the package name. Here, we have to give this HA1 signature certificate. For that you can go to the second documentation link. On the description of this video, go to the page shown and scroll down. Copy this command. Go back to Android Studio, click or open terminal. Paste it here. We have to build first before we execute it. OK build is completed, now we can execute the command. OK. Now we can see the signature. So we are using the debug version. Also we haven't done the release version dot so we are not having those details. And we can see the debug version details here. Okay let's just copy this SHA1. Select copy. And we can go to the Google Cloud then paste the fingerprint here. 
Then we can click on create. It's creating. We can see our client ID and all. Next, just click on OK. Next, we also need to create a web client ID. So click on create credentials once more and click on auth client ID. Now this time we have to choose web application. You can give a name here, but let's keep it to web client one. We don't have to add these, so simply click on create. Okay, creating is in progress. Okay, next we have to copy this client ID and paste it to our Android Studio project. So copy this. Click OK. Let's go back to Android Studio. We need to add the web client ID to strings.xml. Go to string XML file. Let's add a new string. We can name it like server client ID or web client ID. And then paste the value that we copied here. Let's go back to the documentation. Then scroll down and we can see the dependency. We need to copy this line. Then paste it to our Android Studio project Gradle script. Here go to the Gradle scripts, build Gradle the second one, paste the dependency here. Then we have to click on sync now. Sync is in progress. Okay, it's finished. Next, let's go back to the documentation. Now we can go to the create new account with one tap. You can find it on the left side, so select this option. You may read and go through this documentation. Let's just scroll down until you can see configure the one tap client and we can see the details. We need to copy these variables to our main activity. Copy this variables. Let's go back to Android Studio and go to main activity. We can paste it here on the top. For this red text, we can just import the classes. Click on import class or press alt shift enter. Do the same for this one as well. Next, go back to Tay documentation and copy the rest of the code. Start it from here. Until here, block this area and then copy. Back to Android Studio. We can paste it here. Now for the red text, we can import the class. Click on import class. But for this one, we need to put our web client ID that we have created previously. You remember that we added a string in our string.xml file. This one. Next we need to create an onclick listener for the Google button. Go back to main activity. First, let's define our Google button. Just simply click on import class. Add Google button here. Now go back to the documentation and then scroll down. In this third section, display the one tap sign up UI. Scroll down to the code part, block and then copy the code. Go back to our Android Studio project. In here, let's add Google button on click listener. And then paste the code here. For the red text, just click and select import class. This one, simply just click import class. On this, just add the activity name on the add on success listener, which is main activity. On this failure listener also we need to do the same. For this go to the documentation. And you can see here. Let's copy this part. Then go back to Android Studio and paste it here. We'll be changing this start intent sender for result function because it is depreciated and we'll be using the latest methods. So let's block and comment this part. We will be using activity result launcher method. In here, 
I am adding a new object for activity result launcher. Okay, so this is activity result launcher. You may refer to the documentation, the link is in the description. Also the source code. Inside this we have to check if result OK or not. And if this is true we can execute the other things like we can get the sign in credentials. Like email and the user profile etc. So for that we have to start a try catch. The documentation have the code. So let's go back to the documentation. This one, create an account with a Google ID token. Let's copy this code and go back to Android Studio. Paste it here. Inside the catch we can do certain things. But right now we'll be doing simply print it to the log. Here we can see that this is fetching the credentials. For this data, we just need to replace it with result.getData. In this, you can get an ID token from Google and further use it to authenticate with your backend. But for now we will show a toast message to show the mail. Or username or we can create another activity to show the mail or username. So let's add this, string email equal to credential.getID. This will get the mail from the account. Now, let's add a toast message and show the mail on the toast message. Okay, this will show the mail. Next, we have to call this activity result launcher. Scroll down, go to Google button on click listener. Here, just delete these lines. Add this intent sender request. New intent sender request. Dot build. Then we have to launch the activity. For that call the activity result launcher. This is the object that we created previously. We have to call dot launch and pass the intent sender request. We can see that we are having an error on the try catch. So this is saying that we don't need the try catch. So either you can click here or type alt shift enter in the keyboard. We can see the catch for the class is deleted now. Let's check if there are still any error. Looks good. Our implementation is almost complete now. 
Let's add one more string to display. I will get the name of the account. Credential.get display name. We also need to add it in the toes message. Here we just add username. Looks like we're ready to do the test. We can also add an internet permission on the manifest. Go to the manifest and add uses permission internet. Okay, it's now ready for the test. Okay, it's successfully launching the application. If we click the sign in with Google button, it will come up with account choices. Let's select an account. And we can see the sign in is happening. We can see the toast message. So that means the sign up is completed. Okay, that is the demo. Hopefully, we understand how to implement Google sign in on Android. We can add second activity just to display the email then username. If you want the full source code of this project, you can go to my GitHub site. Please check the description of this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more such videos. Thank you. See you in our next video.